Salam and hello everyone. I have a challenge. Why do you hate Islam? This is the title of the challenge. And I'm here claiming as a Muslim, and I believe that Muslim believers will support me in that, that no one has any objective reason or valid reason to hate Islam. And all of those who hate Islam, all of those who can be labeled as Islamophobes, since they have fear of Islam, and here phobia is an unjustifiable uh, fear, which has no rational or objective reasons. Those people were actually, uh, if you want to say, you are, they are under the media influence. They are the, under the anti-Islam media influence. This media which works uh, based on an agenda that has been set by certain <clears throat> governments uh, in the West. Certain governments which have uh, directions and aim at, uh, if you want to say, uh, taking Islam as an enemy and making everyone hate it. But despite that, many people are waking up to the truth. And people who are learning more about Islam, they are one of two people. They are either embracing it and accepting it, or at least respecting it. We have a lot of names to mention here. Uh, many of them are uh, famous, uh, such as the Dutch politicians, Arno van Dorn, who was a far-right activist against Islam. And there are many other names uh, as well. Joram van Cleveren, who was also in Gert Filders, in Netherlands, Gert Filders, far-right uh, movement which has antagonized Islam for a living. So those people and many others uh, have taken Islam as an enemy based on what? Based on false propaganda against Islam. So now in this challenge, why do you hate Islam? And I believe that uh, many Muslims can join in and can even have much better contributions than mine in showing everyone that they have no valid reason whatsoever to hate Islam. Hating Islam and fearing Islam is unjustifiable. Let's start with one fact. Now, one of the main reasons why people would hate Islam is that they believe that Islam is a terrorist religion. And by terrorism, uh, we mean committing acts of violence uh, against civilians. Let's just uh, agree on this definition. I think this is the definition, definition that everyone can agree upon. So does Islam endorse or even encourage terrorism in any way? If we were to examine the Quran and read it thoroughly and connect its verses together without taking some verses out of context, we will find out that Islam prohibits committing any act of violence or harm against civilians of any faith. Islam exclusively allows using uh, violence against enemy combatants. So here it's very it's made very clearly and let us just examine uh, an example from the Quran, this verse which clearly prohibits uh, harming non enemy combatants or civilians, which is from the second chapter, Surah number 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 190, which says, And fight in the way of Allah those who fight you, but do not transgress, for surely Allah loves not transgressors. So clearly stating that you can fight against enemy combatants and any act of transgression is rejected, is refused by Allah, by the Creator because Allah loves not transgressors. And another verse which also uh, makes it clearer on how Muslims should uh, deal with peaceful non-Muslims. Uh, are we supposed to harm them? Are we supposed to be harsh or mean to them? Of course not. In Surah number 60, Surah Al-Mumtahana, verse number 8, it states clearly 
that Muslims are supposed to be just and kind towards peaceful non-Muslims. Now, history is the best witness over that. And there are so many historians and orientalists that have approved the fact that Muslims are the first promoters of coexistence. Even in Spain, in Andalusia, when Muslims ruled Spain for eight centuries, it was called convivencia, or coexistence. Christians of uh, other denominations than the Catholic Church, uh, who were considered as heretics, and Jews as well, fled persecution in Europe to live and thrive under Muslim rule. If you want some historical evidence, you can read the works of Will Durant, of Thomas Arnold, and other historians as well. Even Philip Mansell, a contemporary writer in his book Constantinople, wrote about that, that the Jews fled from Europe, and he also mentioned a, a manuscript in which a Jewish rabbi was calling his brethren to leave Europe and come and live and thrive under Islamic rule. So this is just these are just a few examples. And here we made it very clear that Islam is an anti-terrorist religion. Islam exclusively permits using violence and force against enemy combatants and commands us to be kind and just to peaceful non-Muslims who are not waging wars against Muslims. So here's one fact. There are so many facts that may need to be uh, made clearer concerning women in Islam as an example, concerning uh, other Islamic values. So why would you hate Islam, a religion that enjoins what is right and forbids what is evil? Why would you hate Islam that is a religion that promotes moral values? Why do you hate Islam which is a religion that fights against promiscuity and uh, alcoholism and promotes chastity and family values. Why do you hate Islam? There's no reason whatsoever, no objective or valid reason to hate Islam. I invite you here to learn more about Islam from its genuine sources. If you decide to embrace it, then it will be for your own salvation. Or at least you would, for now, know Islam for its reality and respect it as a true religion, as a genuine religion which promotes positive values. Islam is not a threat. Islam is a religion that promotes justice, charity, equity, and moral values. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and hopefully I will have more Muslim brothers and sisters joining in this challenge. Why do you hate Islam? Thank you again. Have a nice day or a good night, wherever you are. Assalamu alaikum.